Hey y'all, special announcement. We are going to be making a router plane live. Uh, so I want to give you a heads up so you can actually build along with. This will be a full live class where I'll be taking rough stock and turning it into a fully functional router with depth adjustment and everything. So mark your calendars now for October the 9th at 9 a.m. We're gonna be having a lot of fun with that. So let's go over the hardware we need for this so you can actually build along live. Every router needs a router plane iron. This is one that I purchased from Rockler. There are links to that down below. Uh, currently it's about 15 bucks for it. So it's relatively cheap. Normally the price is $20, but they're currently on sale. So you're gonna need a router plane iron. This one has a square shaft, which makes it very easy uh, for the router plane to make out of wooden ones. The original ones from Stanley and Veritas, they're made with this triangular form, which don't work quite as well, but if you have one of those, they work fine. Also, if you don't want to buy one, you can make these. I have a video showing you how to make one out of a standard chisel. You can make them out of Allen wrenches. There are videos all over the web making these things, but buying it is pretty quick and easy. And for 15 bucks, yeah, it goes really well. Next up, we need a way to hold this back, and normally that is done with an eye bolt, uh, but in this case, I wanna have a depth adjuster behind it so we can't have an eye bolt. So in this case, we're going to use a U-bolt. Uh, so this is a three quarter inch wide, so there's a 30 quarter inch gap between these. Again, I have links to the ones that I have down below, and this will lock it in place and actually bolt it against the back of the plane. Normally, it comes with just these standard nuts, but I'm gonna be upgrading these to two different thumb nuts. And so these work really, really well uh, for just being able to adjust it easily. So two quarter 20 th thumb nuts. And then for the depth adjustment, we need a piece of threaded rod. I'm gonna use quarter 20 threaded rod, so it's the same as this. And that needs to be the same length as your router plane iron, so about three inches long. Then for the actual depth, you need a thumb nut that fits into the slot. And for me, that is this, which is a simple quarter 20 thumb bolt, and it's the exact same as the ones I have down there. So it fits into the slot and allows me to adjust the depth up and down. Again, there's links to all of this down below to get the exact same ones that I'm using. Normally, to attach this to the wood, you would install an insert, and this would allow you to then thread this down to the wood. But I'm actually gonna skip this, and I'm just gonna use a simple tap to then tap down into the wood, and that will thread down in there. So I'm gonna be using a tap in the video, but if you want to, you might wanna get a threaded insert to do it for you. You're also going to want a large auger bit, uh, this is an inch and a half, something about inch and a half to two inch. This will create the mouth and opening for the bit to go into. So one of those. Uh, and then you're going to need some five minute epoxy. Now normally I would actually want to use something a little bit better than five minute, like a 30 minute epoxy. Uh, but for sake of the live video, I'm going to do it with a five minute epoxy and you can follow along with that. Or you can get up to that point and then do the rest later. But I'm going to use five minute epoxy. It'll actually do rather well for this. For the lumber, I'm going to be using this hard maple. It is one inch thick by three and a half inches and I'm actually going to be making a fairly long one because I want to use it to do cheeks and tenons. So normally the router plane is only about eight inches long or so. I'm going to make mine oh, a little over a foot, maybe about 14 inches. Uh, and so I need a piece that is at least the length of the router plane that I want. And then also I'm going to need another piece to glue onto the back. And so I'm just going to cut that out of this stock, but you can make it out of whatever scrap you want. To be completely honest, hard maple is very nice for it. It's a very durable wood. You're just going to want something that's hard and doesn't wear down very easily. An oak would work perfectly fine, though it is a little bit more splintery. Um, ash along the same way. Something hard, something from South America. It would work fantastic for this. Again, there are links to all of these items down below, and we're going to be going live at 9 a.m. This will be on the main channel, and I have a link to the actual live video down below so you can set it on your calendar and be ready to go through it. Building the whole thing completely live so you can see every step, every mistake, and we will work along it and see what we come up with. You never know. Is it going to work? Is it not? We're going to have a bit of fun and find out. So I'm looking forward to seeing you on the 9th at 9 a.m. And until then, have a wonderful day.